Hello everyone, thank you for visiting Grindforce Gaming. I am Falcon, and welcome to my in-depth guide covering everything you need to know about the Shadaloo City mode in Street Fighter Duel. Shadaloo City is one of the most interesting game modes in Street Fighter Duel, and it has the best free rewards in the entire game. You can get a huge amount of diamonds, city tips, breakstones, experience, and even opportunities to get high level gear, and the whole thing resets every 48 hours. You will definitely want to make sure that you're gathering all of the rewards from Shadaloo City every time it resets. Here's how it works. What you'll be doing here is traversing three floors along a series of nodes. Any damage that your fighters take in battle carries over into the next fight, but you have access to your entire roster of fighters to get through this. It's important to note that your combo gauge also carries over from fight to fight, so on easier nodes, you can choose to stockpile your combo charges for the next fight. You will need to be in manual mode for that trick, though. Speaking of tricks, right out the gate here, I want to tell you about two huge tips that you might not know of that can save you a lot of heartbreak. Pro tip number one, Shadaloo City is on a 48 hour clock, so you have two full days to accomplish it. Based on my own testing, the difficulty of the nodes does not change over that two day period, but the strength of your fighters will. So if you're having trouble with this game mode, open it up, but don't start traveling on the nodes right away. Take one day to grind up your character levels, gather daily rewards, do some awakenings, and upgrade gear. The entire process will be much easier on the second day. Pro tip number two, you can cancel fights and restart them without penalty. Let me repeat that, because if you didn't know about this, it will transform your game experience. In any of the Shadaloo City fights, including the boss fights, you are able to cancel the fight and try again with no penalty. Basically guys, if your team is about to go down, pause the fight and re-challenge. Your fighter's health and combo gauge will be restored to where they were at the start of the fight. You can then change around your team and try again as many times as you need to until you get a good result. You're welcome. Quick bonus tip before we continue, this restarting trick works in the global operations, so you can reset fights to help you clear the trial grounds and the inverse world. Interestingly, it also works in the guild Shadowlands boss fights. So if you're having a bad run on the Trial of Blood or the Path of Fire, reset it. You won't lose one of your daily attempts until you complete the battle. At the left side of the Shadaloo City screen, if there's an event active, you'll see a poster like this, which gives you the details. City Pursuit is active right now, which gets us that 200% bonus. Below that is the Heroic Grant. You'll get progress toward these milestones as you play, so they give you a way to access it here. At the bottom, they give us a City Shop button in case you want to spend the City Tips that you earn here. Next to that is the Battle Crystal. This is a very powerful item that you can use to revive your entire roster of fighters, including any agents that you picked up, and restore them to full health. This is your last defense if you lose all of your usable fighters, bringing all of them back to life. You'll earn Battle Crystals naturally as you progress in the game, but very slowly, so you don't want to waste them. But when you're backed into a corner, the Battle Crystal is a godsend. Next to that is a button that lets you see all of the boosts that you've picked up so far. This is a good way to check your buffs and decide what boosts to pick up next. Finally, in the bottom right, you can pull up your roster. I recommend opening this tab to check on the health of your fighters before you decide which node to travel to. The blue nodes are the common level enemies. When you land here, you'll need to win one fight against a relatively easy opponent, and you'll collect some decent rewards. The purple nodes are elite enemies. Same deal as the blue nodes, but the enemies will be tougher and the rewards will be greater. From what I can tell, the purple nodes give 10% more cash and fighter experience than the blue nodes, which can really add up over three floors. When choosing between a blue or a purple node, always select the purple one if you can, but if you're having trouble winning fights, take the blue node for a safer option. The yellow nodes are spaces where you don't have to fight at all. Instead, you get to choose from some benefits. If you travel to an Agent HQ spot, you are shown four fighters, leveled to your own team's strength. You're able to select one of them and use it as one of your own fighters for the rest of the course. This is a fun way to experiment with fighters that you don't have yet. The other yellow nodes are the confusingly named Recover and Recovery nodes. I'm not going to call them that because those names are stupid. Instead, I'll be referring to these as the Health Pack and the Turkey. The Turkey will instantly fill 50% health to every fighter in your roster. This is perfect for topping up health right before a boss fight. The health pack will revive a fighter that you've lost and restore them to full health, but only one fighter. This is great if you lose someone important, but keep in mind that if you have multiple downed fighters, it will be random which one gets revived. 
Finally, there are red nodes. At the end of each floor is a boss fight, a large, single-target enemy that you'll need to defeat to complete the floor. There's another optional boss called Kitty Catastrophe on the third floor if you're on hard mode. You should definitely go beat this kitty because your rewards for winning are one of three options. 3,000 soul shards for the dismissal shop, 3,000 medals for the guild shop, or 10,000 honor for the honor shop, all of which are fantastic rewards. As you can see, the 200% bonus applies to these as well if City Pursuit is active. For how to beat the kitty, stick around and I'll get to some boss specific tips toward the end of the video. The other red nodes that appear on the higher floors are the Shadaloo City Shop. While going through this mode, you may have been skipping past these stores without a second thought, but they are absolutely worth a look. If you're smart about your choices, this provides some incredibly high value opportunities. Watch for the percentage off stickers next to your four options. It's not uncommon to see 40% off, and buying things like breakstones or factional SS gear at those rates can be a really smart investment. Even though Shadaloo City gifts you with a boatload of diamonds for completing it, I actually recommend saving some diamonds up before you start it just to make sure that you can take advantage of any great bargains that pop up in the shop for the items that you need. After every battle in Shadaloo City you'll be able to choose a boost which will strengthen your team. These choices deserve a video of their own but here are some quick general tips to help you choose. I like to focus on boosting stats like dodge, haste, HP, and lifesteal, but whatever stats you choose to focus on, stay well rounded with at least one or two buffs to every major stat. There are several boosts that affect particular classes or offer bonuses based on how many of a certain faction are in your squad, so be aware of the faction and the class of your most used fighters and buff them accordingly. Personally, I don't recommend selecting the boosts that only affect the first 10 seconds of a match. It's possible, and kind of fun, to build up a super speedy team that can just nuke the easy opponents, but really this game mode is all about sustain and keeping your roster alive. You don't want to stack yourself with a bunch of buffs that will just disappear early on in a tough fight. The Energy Fragments are a unique item that stacks with itself for bonuses, but it's useless on its own. If you see this early on the first floor, go ahead and pick it up, then collect any more that you see. If you see it for the first time on the second floor or later, I would skip it. The later levels are more likely to offer purple grade boosts, and not only will the Energy Fragment be wasted if you can't find more, there will probably be better boosts that you'll want to pick up anyway. There are also some boosts that increase a certain stat every time you win a battle, up to a certain percentage. These can be good if you grab them early, but they will take several battles to give you the full benefit, so these are another boost that you should skip if you're near the end of the course. After completing the second floor, you'll be presented with an option. You can continue to the normal third floor by going through the purple portal. Or, if you've progressed far enough in the game, you can choose to enter the third floor's hard mode by entering the gold portal. As you might expect, the rewards will be better and the enemies will be tougher on hard mode. This is also where you'll find that kitty catastrophe boss that I mentioned earlier. Hard mode can be genuinely difficult though, so utilize the battle reset trick if you need to, and utilize those Agent HQ nodes that allow you to borrow fighters. They will often offer you Infernal or Master Faction fighters to use. When you enter the third floor on hard mode, you'll get to choose a master, Gokin or Akuma. Gokin's void power allows you to re-roll one of your boosts after a fight, one time. If you don't like your options, you will get one chance to eliminate a boost and replace it with a new one that you select from three new choices. As you upgrade void power, you will increase the number of times you can do this. Akuma's Satsui no Hado has a chance to automatically upgrade one of the boosts, so sometimes after a fight you'll see one of the B-grade boosts become an A, or an A become an S. The more you upgrade Satsui no Hado, the higher the probability that a boost will be upgraded. Both of these abilities are naturally upgraded through rewards from the Floor 3 nodes after you select a Master, so whichever one you choose will also be the one that you're upgrading as you play. Regarding the decision, you can't go wrong. These are both great abilities but Void Power does give you slightly more control over the boosts that you end up with. I'll end the video with some general tips for combat strategy and how to take down these bosses. This mode is all about survival. Shad City is a marathon, not a sprint, so you'll want to use resilient fighters and you should try to include a support character like Elena in your team, with a high health tank up front. I'll reiterate the usefulness of the battle reset. If your team is struggling, cancel the battle. Try again with a new combo string or a different squad, rinse and repeat until you're pleased with the result. Against bosses, you'll want to use fighters and abilities that deal big amounts of single target damage, and guard them with tank and support fighters. During the fight, prioritize abilities that heal and shield. As always, synergy between your heroes is important, so use fighters that complement each other, and don't forget about the factional bonuses you can get for using fighters of the same faction. 
The M. Bison visage at the end doesn't hit very often, but he hits really hard. To avoid getting one shot, bring high health heroes, throw up shields as often as possible, and try to use healing skills right after he hits you. If he knocks out too many of your fighters too soon, reset the fight and try again. Keep experimenting with fighters and combos until you find a combination that works. If all else fails, you can use a battle crystal as a last resort. Congratulations, you've completed my in-depth video guide to Shadowloo City. If you're still having trouble with the combat, make sure to check out our battle strategy videos on the Grindforce Gaming channel. You can also join the Grindforce Gaming Discord to chat with me and the other Grindforce Gaming guys. I'll put a link down in the description. Let me know in the comments if you have any tips for Shadowloo City that I missed. And if this guide helped you, please like and subscribe so we can keep making more of them. Thank you for watching, and enjoy the grind.